Alright guys, welcome to your 29th biology video, and in this video, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about the molecule ATP. Now, I already said in the last couple of videos that ATP is a molecule in your body that stores energy. But where exactly does this energy come from? And the answer is food. So here's the process. Whenever you eat a piece of food, and this could be, you know, a big food molecule like a carbohydrate, or maybe you ate a cheeseburger and you got some lipids, or maybe you just ate a piece of fruit and you got some sugars. Food molecules are really big, complex molecules. So what happens is your body, whenever it sees one of these food molecules, is it breaks it up into smaller molecules. So here are smaller molecules. And of course, we know from the last tutorial, whenever your body breaks up a larger molecule into a smaller molecule, this is called a catabolic reaction. And all catabolic reactions release energy. So again, whenever you have a larger food molecule that gets broken up into smaller molecules, energy is released. Now, of course, it would be kind of silly if you just released energy and wasted it. And that's where ATP comes in handy because this energy right here isn't wasted. It's actually stored in a molecule called ATP. And we'll talk more about this specific molecule right now. But first, let me go ahead and answer the question, why the heck would your body or your cells want to store energy in a molecule called ATP? Well, the reason for this is because your cells don't really need cheeseburgers. They can't eat a cheeseburger like me and you can, but they do need energy to form, uh, you know, whatever molecules they want to form. There's a variety of different molecules that your cell needs, but the important thing is they do this through anabolic reactions. Now, anabolic reactions, of course, require energy, and what happens in an anabolic reaction is two or more smaller molecules, like A and B, need to bond together. Now, whenever smaller molecules bond together, of course, this consumes energy. So basically what happens is ATP is a molecule that stores energy, and the energy comes from, from food breaking up into smaller molecules. Now, whenever this energy is stored, and it sounds like, hey, I'm actually uh, doing something right now, and I'm going to need some energy, the ATP is like, oh, okay, dude, I got some energy stored right here, here you go. So then the cell's like, all right, thank you. Now I can bond my crap together. Thank you, ATP. Simple enough. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about ATP. Now ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So pretty much it has, uh, let me just go ahead and write this. So the adenosine would be something like this. And triphosphate, of course, means three phosphates. I'll draw phosphate would look like this and this and this so basically it's a molecule with three phosphates attached to it so what happens is whenever your cells need energy from this molecule remember this is the molecule that stores energy what happens is it needs to break up some way because energy is only released whenever larger molecules like this gets broken up into smaller molecules so what happens is this molecule right here, and what arrow should I draw? It becomes adenosine diphosphate, which is pretty much your A right here. But instead of three phosphates, you only have two now. So P and P, and then another P gets released. So this molecule is broken up. And remember, whenever a larger molecule breaks up into a smaller one, energy gets released. So I'll put energy released. Now when the energy is released, your cell can use that to, you know, bond together whatever other molecules, you know, maybe it has a random um, molecule down here, A, that it wants to bond with this one, B. So it uses the energy from this to bond those two together. So again, what happens in this process is ATP which is triphosphate or three phosphates, it becomes ADP, which is di, which is two phosphates. Simple enough. So remember that you start with ATP, which is pretty much a molecule that stores energy for your cell. Now the first step that it goes through is whenever 
you know, another cell requires energy for whatever function it does, it needs to go ahead and lose a phosphate. So I just put lose P, P stands for phosphate, and whenever this happens, energy gets released. Now the energy can be used to, you know, do a bunch of different functions in your cells, but for right now, let's just go ahead and concentrate on this cycle right here. So whenever energy is released, this ATP is no longer ATP because T stands for tri and it no longer has that third phosphate, so it now becomes ADP. However, your body can't really use ADP for energy, it needs ATP. So what happens is this ADP, which is two phosphates, it needs another um, phosphate. So what happens is it heads over to the mitochondria because remember, the mitochondria is the place where it's pretty much the power plant of your cell. It makes energy and we call it this because what happens in the mitochondria is ADP gets another phosphate. So this is going on in the mitochondria. This little process right here. And when it gets another phosphate, what happens is in order to do that, of course, this is a chemical reaction that requires energy because whenever you're forming a bigger molecule, it needs energy. So this energy right here actually comes from the breaking down of food, breaking down of sugars, uh, lipids, carbohydrates. So that's where the energy comes from to add another phosphate to ADP. So once another phosphate is added, then it can go ahead and become ATP. So one more time, let me explain to you guys what happens. Whenever a cell is like, dude, need energy. So here's my little cell that needs energy right here. What happens is it talks to ATP and ATP is like, all right, I can spare some energy by getting rid of a phosphate. So it does that and then the energy heads over to the cell and the cell uses it for whatever it needs. However, now we have a problem. Now we are left with ADP and ADP can't give energy to any cells, so it's pretty much useless. So the ADP molecule heads over to the mitochondria and it's like, dude, mitochondria, I need some help. I need to turn back into ATP so I feel useful again. So the mitochondria breaks down some food and whenever it breaks down food, it gives energy that allows a phosphate to bond to the ADP. Why is this occurring? Because it takes energy to bond two smaller molecules and the molecule is a phosphate and the ADP molecule together. So that's why it needs energy and whenever these molecules are bonded together, it once again creates ATP that can of course give energy to another cell that's yelling at it. So that's the entire process. Hopefully you guys understand that. And uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to be going over something that's hopefully a little bit more confusing. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.